Hi guys, welcome back to another Premiere Pro CC 2015 tutorial. Now in today's tutorial we'll be doing some basic color correction in Premiere Pro. Now if we take a look at this clip we can already see that it's very dull and gray, not much going on, and we click play and quickly we can see everything's been brightened up and lively and in this clip right here it's a rose and we've changed it to red and gray. Awesome. So quick right here before and after it is dull and gray bright and lively. And then the rose it is eh, it's colored it's dull and gray but then we have this really cool effect where only the reds are out and the background is black and white. Cool. So let's get started. All right, first off, let's go ahead and open up Premiere Pro. Now, I already have a sequence preloaded because hopefully by now you've learned how to put a sequence in here. If not, I have another tutorial. How cool is that? Okay, so we want to go ahead and start editing the color. So in Premiere Pro CC 2015, you can quickly click Color at the very top here or go to Window, Workspaces, Color, and you'll see something like this. Now, if you don't see this, and you go from your assembly, and you go to Window, Workspaces, Color, and what do I do? I, it's not what we, we saw, or what do I do? It's uh, not what I'm seeing in the tutorial. Easy. You can go to Window, Lumetri Color, and your color panel will open up. Now, back in the old days, when you're editing color in Premiere, in your effects, you would have to go to three-way color corrector, brightness and contrast, and all these different things, and it worked. Or you could download Magic Belt Looks for a good chunk of change, and if you're in college, <laughs> it costs a lot of money. But now, Premiere has kind of integrated this cool elementary color thing that's kind of like a Lightroom and Photoshop inside of Premiere, which is really, really great. Now, to get it highlighted where we can actually start using it, because it's an effect, you need to click a clip, now, instantly, Lumetri Color can really start doing some damage to some clips. You can go crazy, do some crazy things. First off, um, at the top, you had this input LUT thing, which basically is just presets for color. So you can just kind of click through and, you know, pick something you like. If that's all you really want to do is just quickly apply something, um, um, this is a great way to do it. Um, or if you know a lot about LUTs, you can browse for your own, make a custom one, it's fine. But today, we're going to go with none. So to give you a top to bottom overview after I just talked about the LUT thing, um, basic correction is where you can do exposure, contrast, yada, yada. You can brighten it. Really basic things. In creative, you have a look, which is another, another thing kind of like LUTs, um, but it's just built-in stuff. So blue cold to really get a quick view you can kind of like do this click through this looks cool this looks cool this looks cool ah, it's okay um, and if you see one like oh I really like this we need gold western for baseball you can click it it applies it and you could be done but I want it even more custom than that then keep going down have your faded film gives you that Instagram look um, when I say Instagram, I mean the faded look. It's everybody's into it right now. Um, curves, which hopefully you know what curves adjustment do. This is adjusting your highlights. This is adjusting your shadows and your midtones right here. The reds, the greens, and the blues. Your hue saturation curve. We will go over this in a little bit. It's actually an extremely powerful tool. Your color wheels, the saturation within the shadows, midtones, and highlights. Um, and then vignettes. Cool. All right, let's get started. So inside of basic correction is the one I always go to first. Um, I normally like to, on my footage, either crank up the saturation or start playing with exposure. So on this clip, because there's a lot of green in here, I want to go ahead and, and crank up the saturation, which highly saturated for this clip looks really good. 166.6 looks pretty great. So click FX to turn it off. It's in your effects panel over here, the Lumetri color. Off and on. Wow, on looks great. Okay, so next we can actually bring up the exposure a little bit. Now, 
bringing it up does look good, but it is washing out the edges, and I don't like that. And for me, my personal preference is I really like punchy things, so I bring up the contrast some. That looks cool. Now, the highlights are blown out up here. It's completely white, which is blown out footage, but in some cases, I think it looks good. It's not a big deal. And I actually like bringing these out more. It gives it that glow on the field. I like that. And the shadows, maybe darken those a little bit. The whites and the blacks will probably just leave them. But it's the footage is looking pretty orange right now. Um, and that's not my thing. It might be yours, but not mine. I like cooler footage because it is cooler. <laughs> Jokes. All right, so um, we brought the temperature down a little bit. And then the tint, we can bring that up a little bit. Gives it kind of a nice, I don't know what to call this feeling, but at least I like it. And even now, I'm going to bring the saturation up a little more. Cool. So far, looking good. So in our creative panel, I want to bring up the faded film just a little bit. Not much. We can check this tick box on and off to see how much effect we've done. You can see right through here where it's getting affected. On, off on cool now we can might even bring the saturation up in here a little more that's looking really nice now in the curves panel I'm not gonna touch the RGB curves for this clip I think it's fine but in our hue saturation curve which is really cool let's say um, there's a, a photo or a, not a photo but a, a video of something and there's a really prominent red object and the rest is different colors you can Turn all the saturation off of all the colors except for red. Leave red. You've seen it in movies before. It's a really neat effect. But in this case, we want to bring the saturation of the greens up only and leave everything else alone. So quickly, we can click on the green, which would normally, if you have it turned on, you can bump up the saturation of stuff. You can immediately see these greens. It gets more saturated. If we turn it off, it desaturates them. So it's only picking out certain saturations and changing them. So undo this, we're going to actually widen out this picker to a more prominent color. So we'll bring this green up and we'll bring this more kind of tone green. These look the same. We can move this over some and bring this out some. Looking pretty saturated now, which brings me back to creative. Bring down the saturation a little bit. Cool curves and color wheel or hue curve saturate hue saturation curve looks good color wheels are completely fine I don't want to touch them and the vignette a little bit of a vignette I like it kind of gives it that bubbly feel bubbly <laughs> so cool this is looking really good so we can see what we've done before and after a huge difference awesome now we can end this here if we want to I think I've taught you enough just for basic correction but I am gonna continue on the rest of these clips if you like the tone of my voice stay tuned uh, we're gonna keep going awesome alright the next clip this clip is my niece she's not extremely happy if you wanna go ahead and know what the next clip is this is my nephew the next clip is a rose and the next clip is my pug, Princess. She's been featured in videos before. Pretty exciting. All right, this is where this is going to get cool. So just to challenge myself, I want to make the rose really red and the background gray. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, so quickly, we will bring the exposure up, bring the contrast up, bring the saturation up, just a hair because it's already... The, the red goes crazy if we go too high. Um, bring the temperature down a little bit. Bring this over. Cool. Maybe the saturation a little more. Red rose. Looks really great. We can go into our creative panel. We could flip through these if we wanted to. Oh, that looks kind of neat. Blue day for night. Mm, that's kind of cool. Click this. Whoa, that's cool. Preloaded stuff. Already looking awesome. But I want to make my own. Um, we want to, I don't know, bring the vibrance up some. Looking very vibrant. Cool. Now we will go to our curves. Now this is going to be kind of neat. 
we will click here and click here and grab this and desaturate everything but the red holy crap see we brought these lines down all the colors besides red are desaturated now now if we grab this and bring this up we can <laughs> saturate the red within a minute I guess had a vignette we've got this insanely neat clip of a red rose on a gray background and it plays <laughs> how cool is that cool and all right so my niece um darker footage um it was shot on a high iso so bringing up the exposure is going to make it look really grainy i think so just to get started we can go into our basic correction we can actually bring the exposure up and you can immediately see a little bit of grain up here but then we can bring the contrast up or a little bit and bring our highlights out then our shadows out we can bring the saturation up you can see your cheeks get a little rosy red then bring the temperature I like it a little warmer for this one the tint we can leave zero actually okay then in creative maybe bring the faded film up a little bit a tiny tiny bit to bring this out right here then in our saturation in here we can bring it up a tiny bit and our curves this is where this is going to get neat we can grab the shadows and see how it darkens all the shadows we'll leave it alone because we're just kind of experimenting bring the highlights up oh that looks weird we'll just leave it alone i think it's good right now and then we want to make this pink a little pinker we will grab this and bring the pinks up pink is a little pinker awesome I think this clip looks good really quick and easy before and after we've really we brought it back it's look how happy she looks I'm just kidding she looks very upset but I think this looks really good before and after looking awesome cool next clip we are going to color correct my nephew so there's a lot of green there's an orange ball um, right here it's a very clear shot so we can color correct to him it's all in focus I caught him he's running around a lot it was kinda hard to track this little guy down so in basic correction we will go to the exposure immediately because it's a darker clip and we'll bring the exposure up already looking a lot better me I'm a punchy guy so I like to bring the contrast up just a little hair we can bring the saturation up some and you can see the orange ball really standing out now the temperature I think is okay but you know I'm a cool guy I'm gonna cool it down a little bit um, in creative saturation can go up a tiny tiny bit but not much sharpen the footage a little bit bring up the faded film and that looks looking really cool so if we back the footage up some where he's on the grass this is where the hue saturation wheel is going to come in handy you can see my older brother's torso and calves with his son um, we go into hue saturation curve we can pick out these greens and make them oversaturated to bring out the color so we can go ahead and pick only don't touch this don't touch this and pick our greens and bring up the greens immediately you can see how it's changing the greens it's very very powerful tool um, bring these up a little bit Wow, I think this is looking really good so move it over and my home family footage is looking pretty awesome I think right here we can tell where we need to bring the exposure up a little more and bring the contrast up again it should look fine over here yeah it looks good and I think we've done it guys this clip looks awesome so quickly 
on and off. Huge difference. The last clip is my pug. Now, the tones in the clip immediately, just by eyeing it, there's not a lot of color. There's the dull, I think it's a wood back, wooden deck, yeah, wooden deck on the back porch. There you go, yeah. With a pug who she's got some of these lighter tones, brown eyes, dark face. Um, bring the exposure up some, bring the contrast up some, bring the temperature, warm it up a little bit actually on this one because she's already warm. Um, bring the highlights up a little bit, the blacks up, oh, the blacks down, make her face nice and dark. Oh, that looks good. Bring it up, creative, maybe sharpen it or a little bit, bring out the detail in her face and her snout. Or flat snout. Um, you can try this. You can actually bring the curves down. That looks kind of cool. But we'll just kind of leave that alone. Bring the saturation up some. Exposure maybe back down a little bit. Well, we'll leave up is good. Yeah, this clip looks good. Really quick. Lumetri Color and Premiere Pro is pretty powerful. We really love it here. So FX on and off, you can see what we did. Brought everything out, it's bright and beautiful. We have a pug that has been edited. We have a flower that has been seriously edited to our custom color. Um, we have the home footage of my nephew running around on a baseball field looking cool. We have just some more home footage, bringing the colors back. Nothing too crazy, just enough for the family to see. It's dark and we need to brighten it up some. And then on the last clip, more custom work where it's desaturated and dull. We brought the colors out. But thank you guys. That was a quick tutorial on the Metric Color in Premiere Pro. If there's anything else you need or you're working on Premiere Pro CC 2014, I will gladly go into detail on how to get the best of your the color out of your clips. With that also. And thanks, guys. That was a uh, quick color tutorial in Premiere Pro CC 2015. It's become a very powerful tool, Lumetri Color, so the tutorial's not that hard to get through. Um, I really thank you for watching, and uh, if you enjoy my tutorials, please like and subscribe for more. And uh, feel free to leave comments and suggestions, or leave suggestions down in the comments and uh, what, what to do next. Ask me any questions, and I'll gladly answer them and do a tutorial about it. It's not a big deal. So thanks, guys. Um, Till next time.